My name is Luke Archambault. I'm a field application engineer at Microchip Technologies. In this video, we will be creating a complete TCP IP project running on a PIC32MX device and running a local web server. We will also add a custom TCP IP client socket that will connect to the Yahoo Weather API using a secure connection over SSL slash TLS and retrieve the temperature of Phoenix and Arizona. The information will be provided over a USB CDC class to a terminal application running on the computer. In order to achieve this, the video is divided into three sections. In section one, we will be creating the TCP IP project using MHC. In section two, we'll be adding the USB console interface. And in the last section, we'll be adding the SSL library and the TCP IP custom client applications. So let's start with section one by creating the TCP IP project using MHC. First, we will be selecting the board support package. In our demo, we will be using the PIC32MX Ethernet starter kit. We will be adding the TCP IP stack using one network interface. The PIC32MX795 has an internal 10100 Mac. We'll be adding the HTTP server, which will serve the local web page. We will add simple network time protocol to allow the SSL library to validate the issue date and expiration date of the certificate provided during the NSSL connection. We'll be adding up drivers to configure the Mac and the Fi attached to the PIC32MX. We'll be adding the file system for the HTTP server to retrieve the local web page. And we'll be adding NVM or non-volatile memory to store that local web page onto the onboard flash of the PIC32. We will then be setting the PIC32 config bits uh, with the various views uh, for the operating mode of the device. And we will be using a utility uh, to discover our device uh, once attached or once connected to our local area network. Okay, let's start MPLabX. So this project was created using MPLabX version 3.0 MPLAB XC32 compiler version 1.33 and Harmony library version 1.04.02. The first thing that you'll need to verify is under Tools Embedded that you have the MPLAB Harmony configurator installed. If it is not installed, you need to install it under the plugins. Once installed, go under File, New Project. Select the MPLAB Harmony project. Next, if it's your first time you're using Harmony, you need to set the path where the Harmony library is located. So if you browse to your computer, to the C drive, microchip, Harmony, and in this case we will be using version 1.04.02. We'll select that. We'll set the project name, uh, yahoo underscore SSL and the configuration name yahoo underscore ssl and then last we'll be setting the device that we will be using so in our case it is the pic32 mx 795 f512l and then click finish while mhc is configuring your project you notice that on the left hand side a the Yahoo SSL project is uh, being created. So if I expand that, uh, you'll see that multiple subfolders have been created under the project. If you expand these subfolders, uh, no files yet has been added since we haven't uh, completed uh, our project. If you come to the middle tab, you will notice that the MPLAB Harmony Configurator tab has uh, appeared, uh, which contains three sub-tabs. So the first tab is the Option tabs. Uh, this is where we will configure all our project with the framework uh, libraries, uh, which is the TCP IP, USB, and, and graphic libraries. The second tab is the, the Clock Diagram tab, so under this tab, this is a graphical interface that allows you to configure the internal oscillator uh, to set it to 80 megahertz and setting the different PLL for the prescaler and postscaler to obtain that frequency. And the third tab is the 
uh, pin diagram tab and which allows you to graphically again uh, configure these uh, pins uh, to be input output or analog so let's go back to the first tab the first thing we will be setting in this first tab is the number of application in our case we will be only using one application since we're only using the uh, Yahoo apps to connect to the Yahoo server but if you have multiple application that you need to run uh, this is where it will be set up then we will be selecting the board support package so as mentioned microchip provides various demo boards and here's an example of all these demo boards supported uh, by Harmony so if we click on the pic 32 mx ethernet starter kit this is the one we will be using and this is a picture of uh, that demo board this demo board the starter kit contains the full debugger on board so nothing else is required to connect to MP lab uh, here's the pic 32 mx 795 with the ethernet uh, 10 100 rj45 uh, jack over here this is a debug port uh, so that connects directly to the debugger chip over here and here are two USB connectors the top connector is a USB host connector while the bottom is a USB on the go connector which we will be using as a USB device connection to the PC this is connected to this PIC 32 MX over here so if I move that away uh, so once the board is uh, selected then we will go into the Harmony framework configuration and we will configure the first thing we'll configure the TCP IP stack so we'll select that you will see that we have multiple uh, check uh, box already checked uh, so IPv4 is selected uh, we're using TCP and UDP uh, we're using ICMPv4 client the Harmony uh, TCP IP stack supports multiple network at the same time so you can have uh, the PIC32 uh, supporting uh, one Ethernet and one Wi-Fi or actually two Ethernet to two different network or even more so here's where we will set up the number of network in our case we will be only using one network and here's the configuration for that network so for that single network we'll be using the PIC32 INT or the internal uh, 10100 Mac but we could have selected the MRF 24W which is our Wi-Fi module or the ENCX 24J600 which is a, a standalone 10100 uh, Mac and Fi uh, that can be connected over SPI or parallel interface to the PIC32 MX device so let's select the PIC32 internal and let's provide a unique host name to our device so yahoo underscore SSL in our case so here's uh, that's all there is to be done for the network and in uh, interface if we scroll down uh, we will deselect the TCP console and debug service so the TCP IP stack provides its own console and debug services uh, but we will not be using it as uh, later on in section 2 and we will enable the Harmony console interface uh, again we scroll down we will be selecting the HTTP server because we will be serving a local web page uh, over here uh, one thing needs to be selected is enable update via HTTP this will allow you to actually uh, use an HTTP post method uh, to upload a new web page on the PIC microcontroller so that's very convenient if we scroll down uh, here's we're including the default HTTP custom template so here's the web page uh, the default web page provided by the Harmony library if you have your own web page you will need to uncheck that or overwrite the the one that's being provided in the project so we'll leave it selected again we scroll down uh, we're gonna use SNTP so we're gonna check SNTP simple network time protocol which will provide the true date to the SSL library to validate the issue date and uh, expiration date of the certificate provided by the Yahoo server during an SSL connection the time protocol uh, is enabled and last uh, we will deselect the use TCP IP command at this 
uh, point because uh, we will not have the console enabled yet, which is only enabled in the second section. So TCP IP commands is a method to provide to get or set information for the TCP IP stack over the console. Uh, but since the console is not yet enabled, we'll deselect that. So we are done with the TCP IP stack. So let's minimize this. Now that we have in, uh, selected the, the stack, what is the driver? What? Uh, how do I interface uh, to the Ethernet Mac? Uh, so you can see here there's various drivers, one for the ENC, one for the internal Mac, and one for the Wi-Fi. Since we have selected the internal Mac, if I expand that, you will see that it's already checked. There's only one thing here that needs to be changed is actually the PHY that is attached to uh, the PIC32. And in this case, uh, the PHY is actually the National DP83848 uh, PHY. So we will select this one. Uh, we are done with the driver for the Mac. Uh, then uh, we'll install the file system. So if I go into the system services, so let's minimize the driver. Let's go into system services. In the system services, we will enable the file system. And you will notice that it's already checked because we have enabled the HTTP server, which requires uh, the file system to, uh, to retrieve that web page few things to change over here in the use file system service uh, multiple files need to be accessed at the same time or open at the same time so let's set it to 25 and the second thing is to change the file system type so there's only one file system type but uh, the local web page is served by the microchip file system not by the fat file system so it's a different format, so microchip file system needs to be selected and fat file system needs to be deselected. So we're done with the file system. So now that we have the file system, where is that web page uh, located? Is it into the internal flash? Is it into the, an external e square prom? And this is where we will define under the driver that we will need to use the NVM memory. So we will use the non-volatile memory in order to store the web page. Uh, so it will be on the PIC flash. So we need to enable the use NVM. We will change the location of that uh, page uh, to be located at 0x9d07 and 40. So the last 64k bytes of the uh, 512k bytes of that PIC32 and we'll reserve 64 K bytes for that location. We, if, we, if I scroll down, I need to enable the erase write function and I need to register it with the file system. Enabling the erase write function allows you to actually update the web page over uh, HTTP. Uh, if you do not select this, you will not be able to upload a new web page. And we are done with the NVM. So uh, we've got the, H, uh, the TCP IP stack, we've got the, uh, the file system, we've got uh, the different drivers installed. Now we need to configure the device. So let's minimize the Harmony framework. If I expand the device and project configuration, uh, PIC32 MX795 uh, F512L, uh, there are four configuration registers. The first one, the top one, the dev config three. Uh, we need to set these to all off. Uh, for more details, please refer to the uh, data sheet of the uh, PIC 327 MX795. Next config register, dev config 2. Uh, we will uh, use the PLL input divider, set it to divided by 2. Uh, on the PIC 32 MX Ethernet starter kit, there's an 8 MHz crystal. Uh, divided by 2 makes it 4 MHz. We will then multiply it by 20, giving us the internal 80 megahertz frequency. And we will use the USB PLL input divider divided by two, and we will not turn on the USB PLL uh, yet, as this will automatically be enabled 
in the next session when we will use the console and the USB CDC class. Uh, but for your information, the uh, USB PLL is a multiply by a 24. So 8 megahertz crystal divided by 2, 4 megahertz times 24 is 96 megahertz for the internal USB frequency. And then the system PLL output clock divider uh, divided by 1 to give us the uh, system clock of 80 megahertz. Uh, next register, DevConfig1, uh, we're using the primary PLL. On the board, there is a 32 kilohertz watch crystal, uh, which is attached to the secondary oscillator. Uh, you can use it or not. In our case, we do not do not need it, so we'll turn it off. Uh, we will use the uh, the primary oscillator. Will you be using XT, so the external uh, crystal? The output off the, the the peripheral clock divider will be divided by one, so the peripheral will be running at at 80 megahertz, and the watchdog will turn the watchdog off. Uh, the last config register. Uh, nothing to change over here so we are complete with the configuration bit so what we need to do is actually generate uh, our project uh, it will ask you to save it which we will and generate the project so if you look at the uh, project window on the left uh, multiple subfolders have been added and actually files have been added so under the header file, some uh, under the app, uh, there are other subfolders and files added. If I look at the uh, source file uh, and expand the app uh, subfolders, you see all the files that the that the MHC has been adding to our project. Uh, so the app.c, which is our single application, uh, MPFS image 2, which is actually the, the default web page loaded. Custom HTTP uh, app is actually uh, all the different functions uh, that are, uh, that calls the dynamic variable served on that web page. And uh, if I expand the framework, Here's all the uh, the driver subfolders, the system subfolders, and the TCP IP stack uh, subfolders uh, to run the uh, TCP framework. Once this is done, let's actually, before we program, let's open the uh, app.c file. You can see that there's two functions in this file, uh, the first one being app initialize. So at PowerUp, uh, this function is being called. This is where uh, this, the the application state machine, sorry, this is where the application state machine is being initialized, and this is where you will initialize all your variable or other functions that uh, needs to be initialized here. And the second function is the app task. So in the main loop, the main while one loop, app task is being called uh, periodically. And this is where you will run your state machine for your application. So this is a default. So for the purpose of this video, we are providing you the file so, uh, shown on the link of this video. And if I go, here are the files. So there are four files provided to create that project. We need to copy these files. And if I go onto my computer, under microchip harmony version 1.04.02 apps you will notice that there's a new folder uh, for our project uh, that we just created if I go in this project firmware source file here are all the source file uh, needed or created by MHC we need to paste uh, the four files over here so I will copy the four files over here. I will overwrite the app.c and I will overwrite app.h uh, and the other files have been added. So if I move, go back to mplabx, so you can see that the file has been reloaded. So if I scroll down, the init file is, is the same. The app task is modified to the new application. The first thing I'm doing is in the in the init state, I'm mounting the file system. And once the file system is mounted, 
I'm setting up a periodic callback every 500 milliseconds to a function heartbeat, which will toggle the, the LED on the board uh, every 500 milliseconds. Uh, then it will change the, the state to the next state, which will be state run. And this states we will not be doing anything in this first section, but you can see that the app Yahoo task is uh, commented out here, and that will be enabled in the third section of this video. Scrolling down again, uh, here's a function for the heartbeat, which actually toggles the LED, uh, the LED three on the board every 500 milliseconds. So now we are ready to to program. So if I click on the make and program device main project. The first thing it will ask me if a uh, debugger has not been set yet is to set it up. Uh, so under Microchip Starter Kit, Legacy Starter Kit, we will be selecting the SKDE PIC32. Click OK. And it is starting to build the project and it will be programming uh, the device. programming the target device and it's running the target device so technically the demo board now is connected to my local area network how do I know its IP address if we go back into the MP lab harmony configurator tab if I minimize the device configuration go back into the harmony framework at TCP IP stack there is a service which is called Use Announce Discovery Tool. Uh, this is a server running on it to uh, the PIC that listens uh, for an incoming packet with a specific string on port 3033. And when there's a request at that port, the PIC32 will advertise its IP address, MAC address, and uh, host name to the requester or the to the client so use announce discovery tool uh, was already uh, checked and is actually active on this project so if I go into again my computer my C drive uh, microchip harmony version 1.04.02 there is a folder called utilities and there's a uh, again in this folder is one that's called tcpip underscore discoverer there is a an application a java application called tcpip underscore discoverer and if i launch this this application and click on discover uh, device uh, you will see that the pic is responding uh, so this is a broadcast message uh, with a specific uh, information and when the PIC receives that, it, it reply back uh, with its MAC address, uh, with the host name, Yahoo underscore SSL, with the MAC type it's using, so in, in this case, the PIC32 ENT, and the IP address that has been assigned to that board. So now if I double click on the MAC address, it will launch uh, my browser, and here's a web page being served by the, the PIC32. So this is the default web page serve. So you can see the LED blinking every half a second here. Here's a random number being displayed by the application. And if I press on the button, uh, you will see that the button are changing state uh, right over here. So this concludes this first section. Now in section two, we will be adding the console service. So we'll add the USB console and we'll also configure the USB stack to provide the proper descriptor for that CDC class. And then we'll be connecting to the ESK32 over a terminal application running on my computer. So if I go back into MPLAB X under the Harmony Configurator tab, uh, if I expand the Harmony Framework configuration uh, under the system services, I will need to enable the console service so I will check that and uh, the first thing I need to change here is uh, the console type will be a USB CDC console 
and there's a note here saying USB CDC is currently not supported for static console mode so we will change this for dynamic mode and uh, let's minimize it uh, if you look at the Harmony documentation the console service can only be called by either the debug service the command processor or the file system service uh, in our case we will use the command service so I will expand that check that that's all there is to do here now that we have enabled the console uh, over USB let's go into the uh, USB library and you will notice that it's already enabled so if I expand this the one thing I need to change here is the USB device instant zero if I expand that uh, the product ID or the descriptor of this device needs to be changed to a CDC COM port single demo. If you do not set it up over here, uh, that device will have no descriptor defined unless you provide your own and then it will not enumerate properly on your computer. So CDC COM port single demo uh, is a descriptor type. Now I can minimize this. Uh, the other thing uh, we will change is if we go back into the TCP IP stack, now I can enable the use TCP IP command service since I will have the console enabled. So if I check that, I will have the uh, various commands so I'll, it will allow me to get uh, and set uh, information about that TCP IP stack over uh, the command terminal. Uh, once this is done, uh, this is complete so I can minimize the TCP IP stack. I can generate my code. I will save it and generate. So again, MHC is, is adding some files to my project. Now if I go under the source file framework and expand it, and now you can see that the USB framework has been added to my project. Uh, now I can program the device. And now it's running the target. The shine that you just heard is actually uh, the PSK32 enumerating to my computer. The application I will be using is Coulterm. So if I launch Coulterm under the option tab, I can see that COM9 is already uh, selected. Uh, so this is the only device connected to my computer. And if I hit the connect button and hit the return, uh, now I'm getting the uh, the power up message from the stack being uh, starting initialization and uh, completing initialization. Uh, I can, now I can get over the TCP IP uh, command uh, some information about the network. So if I type net info, uh, I get all the information about the network setup. So the IP of my device, the MAC address of my device, the gateway uh, the DHCP is on. All these commands could be actually found into the project. If I go under source file, framework, TCP IP, I expand TCP IP and I expand stack, there's a file called TCP IP commands. If I open that file and scroll down, you can see all the uh, different command that is supported by the uh, command TCP IP. So we just did the net info. Uh, but there are other commands like DHCP to turn in on or off, uh, set the IP so I can actually set a static IP to my device once I have turned off the DHCP client on the uh, device. Uh, I can ping other device. So if I go back, uh, here's one we can try. If I go back onto the uh, cold term, I can actually ping uh, microchip.com. So www.microchip.com and it will actually uh, resolve the IP address of microchip.com and then start picking the, uh, the web server. So 17 milliseconds to ping microchip.com. And that concludes that uh, section two. Now in section three, we will be adding the SSL library. Uh, this requires more dynamic memory allocation to store the key and the certificate. So we will need to increase the heap by 20 k bytes. Uh, we will be adding the Yahoo Weather client application. Uh, these are custom files written specifically for this demonstration. So we will add app underscore yahoo.c and we will be adding certs.h 
which is the certificate provided by, by that Yahoo weather server. And we will then be sniffing packets using a tool called Wireshark. Uh, Wireshark allows us to view packets uh, exchange between the Ethernet starter kit and the Yahoo weather server. So if I go back into MPLAB X under the MPLAB Harmony configurator tab, uh, the SSL library is provided to us by a third party, uh, Wolf SSL. So if I go under the third party libraries, TCP IP, uh, CASL or CYASSL, I need to enable that uh, library. Uh, here, nothing to change, uh, just to mention that under the protocol and key exchange, the use of Diffie-Hellman protocol key exchange is very secure, uh, but is it's very computer intensive. So on a PIC32 MX running at 80 megahertz, uh, this takes between 600 and 800 milliseconds to compute that key. So if you are regularly connecting to your server uh, using SSL, uh, you may decide not to use that uh, protocol type. Uh, in our case, we will leave it uh, selected because we're only connecting to the Yahoo server uh, once every uh, 10 seconds. So we're done with the addition of the SSL library. As mentioned, the uh, dynamic memory allocation for the key and the certificate and needs to be increased. So under the device and project configuration, project config, XC32, linker, and general, uh, we need to increase the heap by 20K, so to uh, 64 K bytes. And we are done modifying our project, so we can generate, uh, save the project, and generate again. So under the projects uh, tab, under the uh, source file, now you will notice that the third party folder has been added. And here is the CIASL library folder uh, with all the files for the SSL library. Few files uh, to be added to our project. So under the header files, uh, app, I need to add existing items. So right click on app add existing item and we need to add the certs.h and under the source file app again right click add existing item and add the app underscore yahoo.c file uh, now I need to call that task so if I go on the app.c file uh, where my state machine is and scroll down to my state app underscore state run uh, where I add the app underscore yahoo task commented out and now I need to uncomment this and at the end of the file there's a callback function that also needs to be uncommented and uh, now we're ready to program uh, our part so let's hit the program programming the target and running the target. Uh, so the app Yahoo task is actually pulling the Yahoo server every 10 seconds and uh, pro getting the information of the temperature for uh, Phoenix in Arizona and displaying it over the console terminal. So if I launch cool term, connect and hit the return, here you will notice that after the stack initialization, the CIASL library is returning some errors. And the error minus 188 is actually the rejection of that certificate because it's unable to verify the issue and expiration date of that certificate provided by the Yahoo server. And the reason for this is that the SNTP task has not updated the time yet. And here is actually, if you look at a few lines down, here's a print of the SNTP uh, updated and this is actually a modification I did for the purpose of this demo where I've added a printf uh, in the SNTP state machine uh, to print when the date of the application is updated and you can see from this point on that when the application is connecting to the Yahoo server uh, the, re the connection is successful and it retrieves the temperature of Phoenix uh, which is 93 degree Fahrenheit uh, presently 
So if for some reason, if your SNTP application is blocked by your firewall, uh, you will keep getting error minus 188. So in order to prevent this, uh, you can actually turn off the certificate uh, validation. So if I go back into MPLabX, open the file app underscore yahoo.c and scroll down to the function that is called TCP IP underscore TLS underscore create connection. Uh, here is where we are loading uh, the certificate. And if I scroll down again, here is where I enable or disable uh, the certificate verification. So in our case, it is enabled, so it SSL verify peer. Uh, but if your SNTP is blocked uh, by your firewall and the SSL cannot validate the issue date or expiration date of the certificate, then it will reject it. So you need to set it to SSL verify none. And also, if you are unable to load the uh, root CA that is signing that uh, server certificate in the file search.h, uh, you may want to disable this, but this is at your own risk, obviously. Uh, now we're ready to monitor or view the packet exchange between uh, the Ethernet starter kit. So let me launch that tool called Wireshark. The first thing I will need to do is uh, I will do a set of filter. And the filter is will be on the e, the MAC address of the Ethernet starter kit, or any UDP packet coming in and out of the uh, router. So 192.168.0.1. Uh, so this will allow me to view all these packets either from the Ethernet starter kit or from the or UDP packet coming out of the uh, router. So I will apply that filter. Uh, one thing to mention on my LAN setup is I have a switch with a mirror port uh, which is connected to this computer. So any connection coming in and out of the Ethernet starter kit is also being copied on that mirror port so Wireshark can view all the information. So before I start, let me reset that Ethernet starter kit. Also make sure you close the browser that displays the local web page so you don't see all the communication between the browser and the Ethernet starter kit. Start and then launch the ESK. So here's the connection coming out of the Ethernet starter kit. So if I go back to the top of this uh, capture, here is the request of the uh, Ethernet surrogate for a DH DHCP discover uh, so it's requesting an IP address here's the offer from the router and here's the request for the offer and here's the acknowledge from the router for this uh, IP address keep scrolling down here's a UDP broadcast from uh, the application discoverer uh, which is running on our uh, TCP IP stack, which broadcasts the IP address, MAC address, in MAC type of the uh, TCP IP stack on port 3033. So any application can actually sniff this information and view the IP address. Keep scrolling down. Uh, here is the actually the DNS query uh, for to resolve the IP address of weather.yahooapis.com. And here's the connection to that server. Uh, here's the SYN and SYNAC. So, uh, so typical uh, SSL connection, uh, client LO, server LO. Keep scrolling down. You'll see here's the certificate. But you will notice that the socket is being closed right after that. And the reason being is that the SSL library is unable to validate that certificate because uh, the time is not has not been updated onto the application yet, so it rejects that certificate because of the uh, issue date and expiration date not matching uh, the date on the uh, TCP IP stack. So if I keep scrolling down, there's a, there's another connection being attempted. Um, here's the uh, certificate and here's the socket again being closed. So let me scroll down until I see that SNTP connection. And here's that NTP connection. So here's the IP address of the Ethernet starter kit. 
uh, requesting the uh, uh, the time and here's the response back from that uh, time server uh, next here's an uh, the yahoo task uh, keeps trying to do a connection to that yahoo server so here's the connection client hello server hello if i scroll down here's the certificate uh, but you will notice that the socket is being closed again and the reason for this is that even though the stack has received the response from the SNTP server, uh, the application uh, SNTP is made of multiple state machine. So until the uh, date uh, has been updated into the application, uh, it takes several uh, state. So that's why it's being rejected here. But if I keep scrolling down, here's the client hello server hello and here's the certificate but now you'll notice that the uh, client key exchange is happening so that certificate has been uh, approved and here's the key, uh, client key exchange and here's the application data where the uh, server is sending us the uh, weather or the temperature of Phoenix in Arizona and this is happening every uh, 10 seconds so this concludes the, this section and actually this concludes this video. Thank you for watching.